So, let's get started with some um, basic information about uh, essentially what to get started with and, and what the outlook of uh, cybersecurity is around the world at the moment. Now, these figures and certifications are ones that I've gathered um, as well as experience from multiple different countries. So this isn't Australia specific or US specific or UK, Canada, etc. This is literally a collection of uh, pretty much everywhere. And I wanted to do it like that because um, I thought it was going to be nice in general. And it'll be easier to essentially you know, get the ball rolling in and get things moving a little bit. So the first one I want to talk about is the junior pen tester. Now, with junior pen testers, what I've seen and what I did some research on this week was that the EJBT, EJPT followed by the OSCP are the two most commonly asked for certifications. Now, I'm not saying that you should focus on certifications. I'm saying that knowledge is what you should ultimately be chasing here. But this is what people are asking for on uh, job boards. Uh, if that's right or wrong, that's that's entirely up to you. Um, most of them do ask for some sort of uh, tertiary qualification, like a university degree or a master's or um, even like a trade school TAFE. Uh, but the, the key pointer for a junior pen tester, and this might be shocking, it might not be shocking to you, is that they are asking for an average of one to three years experience for a junior pen tester role. Now, they're not asking for one to three years junior pen tester or pen tester experience. They're asking for one to three years of IT experience generally across the board. So if that helps to answer that question, um, that's sort of what I've seen. And that I did clarify all of this with uh, two different recruiters, one in the US and one in Australia. Um, the average money, and this is in um, Australian dollars, you guys can convert it with the trusty old Google, is $90,000 per year for a junior pen tester. Now that is the average. I thought it was honestly a little bit high um, from what I've seen, but I mean, that's that's the numbers. That's what it came up with. So um, I'm just relaying the message of the research to you guys. So I hope that um, that helps you out and, and sort of gives you an understanding of what's required to get in um, as a junior pen tester. Now on the topic of pen testing, um, I have to do it. I have to mention the Safer Internet Project. If you guys are interested in becoming a penetration tester or completing compliance reports, head on over to saferinternetproject.com and check out the project that's going on over there. The quick rundown is that uh, we are providing a learning experience for you to learn exactly how to do pen testing from zero all the way up to experienced. Now, how we do that is by providing you with learning modules to complete as well as uh, shadowing professionals, which is myself and Gareth to complete pen tests. And then eventually once you have passed a verification process, you then are able to perform uh, pen tests in groups with other members. Now, uh, those are overlooked, of course, and the results are sort of massaged and it's all about learning here. Um, but it is a, a great program to get a, a behind and be a part of. So if you're looking to uh, become a pen tester, check out saferinternetproject.com. It's, it's an awesome program. The guys and girls who are in there at the moment um, I'm enjoying it so much. I'm sure you might see something in the um, in the chat about this uh, from people who are in there now. Um, by all means, check it out. I think it's absolutely worthwhile. On to the next job, which is the junior security engineer slash analyst. Now, the two most required certifications, and these one of these might shock you. The first one is the CYSA Plus by Comp TIA. Now. That one I thought was a no-brainer. Um, previously, I would have said it would be the Security Plus, but it looks like times have changed. Things have caught up. They're now looking for the CYSA Plus. Um, now, that's a great certification to get if you want to become an analyst. The other certification was the CCNA. Now, you might realize I mentioned that in a video just the other day, and um, that's literally where I got that information from, was from doing this research, and that's when I thought I'd, I'd make a video about that. So the CCNA, the CYSA Plus 
are the two most asked for certifications for junior security engineers slash analysts. The minimum required experience in IT, not specifically in uh, cybersecurity, is one year. So zero to one year's experience, which I, I thought was pretty cool. Um, it looks like it's definitely easier than um, getting into pen testing, um, especially because of that experience gap that they're, they're asking for there. The average in Australian dollars is $80,000 a year for a junior security engineer slash analyst, which I thought was roughly correct. That seemed about right to me. The last one on this list while I'm waiting for some of these questions to come in is the junior GRC officer slash analyst. Now, depending on the organization that you're going to be working in, um, this role is usually within part of what a security engineer or SOC analyst would do, sometimes even in incident response. But this was, um, it seems to have grown into its own uh, thing that has become more popular now where there are dedicated GRC officers and more of those positions becoming available. Um, the, require, the two most popular certifications I could find for these two roles were the Splunk Fundamentals 1 and 2 and the CompTIA Security Plus. Um, those were across multiple different countries, multiple different uh, company sizes. Um, that was just the, the two most popular. Now, I thought the Splunk Fundamentals was an interesting one to have in a compliance job, but um, I guess it does kind of make sense and it's, it's interesting that it's in there. So, um, one of them is actually free as far as certifications go, so that's, that's awesome. Um, like I said at the start though, what you should be chasing is knowledge, not so much certifications, and I'm sure I'll get some questions about that later on. The experience <clears throat> required for a junior GRC officer slash analyst is zero to one year. So that's, um, it's pretty much on par with the security engineer analyst and um, the top end is sort of asking for one year plus the normal end of a, G a junior GRC officer is asking for no experience at all um, within IT, which I, I thought was quite surprising. The average salary of someone working in a GRC, a junior GRC officer position uh, in Australian dollars is $65,000 a year. So I thought that was, um, that was pretty interesting. I think that's some good information um, Splunk Fundamentals is absolutely an expensive certification to um, get and it's, um, I mean, it's not cheap, but usually if you get the number one, then you um, sort of get your foot into a door and you can potentially use that to, uh, you know, leverage the company that you're working for, organization, to pay for the number two for you as part of their upskilling um, within the industry. Uh, program, which most places do have these days, including smaller like MSPs and, and stuff like that. So um, absolutely check out uh, all of those jobs. If you're looking to um, get into cybersecurity, those are the three most popular that I could see at the moment. And um, yeah, I think it's a great place to start.